Good morning, Good morning. sir. Good morning to you. All right. So here we are on roll eight. Um, we're gonna, we'll, we'll get as far as we can in this in the next hour, hour and a half, I guess, or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty oh. short chapter, but we'll see where we go. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. See, yeah, I think it's only, well, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll see what we get through. We'll, yeah, let the I have, uh, we'll let the natural, we'll let the natural flow guide us. Good, yeah. And I, I, I had listened to Michael Robbins talking about uh, I listened to him cover this chapter from the Moria Federation earlier in the week, and he goes into such amazing detail with everything. So if anybody is looking for an even, you know, a, a very deep perspective, um, they, he provides uh, you know, such profound uh, commentary on it all so you know we're we're coming from wherever we're coming from right <laughs> so uh, all right so the, uh, rule eight is the uh, you want me to do a couple yeah you get started with rule eight right. we're, we're still talking this is the second the second dose the second rule related to the astral plane, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. seventh was the first, right? So, yeah, why don't you get us started? Mm -hmm. The Agnusurians respond to the sound. The water, the waters ebb and flow. Let the magician guard himself from drowning at the point where land and water meet. The midway spot, which is neither dry nor wet, must provide the standing place whereon his feet are set. Neither water, land, and air meet. When water, land, and air meet, there is the place for magic to be wrought. Types of astral force and cyclic ebb and flow is what we're going to cover down on. So types of astral force. It would be advisable for the student to read with care the commentary on this rule as given in the treatise on cosmic fire. It will be noted how extremely abstruse it is and how full of almost blind occult information. This should, however, be studied. The word astral plane should also be looked up and a general idea gained as to its nature and its function as the battleground of the senses and as the place from which magic is wrought. The intelligent and constructive desire of the white magician acting under the instruction of his own soul and therefore occupied with group work is the motivating power back, back of all magical phenomena. This magical work is begun in the magician's own life, extends to the world of the astral plane, and from thence, when potent there, can begin to demonstrate on the physical plane and on the higher planes eventually. We shall therefore take a good deal of time over this rule for it covers the immediate work and activity of the intelligent aspirant. It is the most important in the book from the standpoint of the average student. It cannot be understood where there's no soul contact, nor can the magical force of the soul work out in manifestation upon the plane, a physical plane, until the meaning of its esoteric phrases has been somewhat wrought out in the inner experience of the magician. Most true aspirants are now at the midway spot and can either drown and make no further progress this life or stand and so hold the ground gained or become true practicing magicians. Efficient in white magic, which is based on love, animated by wisdom, and intelligently applied to forms. We will therefore divide this rule into several parts. The more easily to study, the, the more easily to study it and take them up step by step so as to grasp their application in the average life of the probationary disciple, 
and to gain a wise understanding of their wide implications. These three divisions are one, the response of the astral elementals and the consequent ebb and flow of the waters. Two, the dangers of the midway spot, its nature and the opportunity it affords. And three, the place where magic is wrought. We will study now the first point, which is summed up for us in the words, the Agnesurians respond to the sound, the waters ebb and flow. The situation might be stated in the following terse statements. The rules already studied convey the truth about, I'm sorry, Anent, the magician. One, the soul has communicated with his instrument in the three worlds. And two, the man on the physical plane recognizes the contact and the light in the head shines forth, sometimes recognized and sometimes unrecognized by the aspirant. Three, the soul sounds forth its note. A thought form is created in, con in consonance with the united meditation of the soul and the man, his instrument. Four, this thought form embodying the will of the ego or soul cooperating with the personality takes to itself a triple form constituting of the matter of all three planes and vitalized through the activity and by the emanations from the heart, throat, and ajna centers of the white magician, the soul in conjunction with its instrument. Five, the personality sheets, each with its own individual life, feel they are losing their power and the battle between the forces of matter and the force of the soul is violently renewed. Six, this battle must be fought out on the astral plane and will decide three things. A, whether the soul will in any one life, for some life holds the critical stage, be the dominant factor and the personality from henceforth be the servant of the soul. B, whether the astral plane is no longer the plane of illusion, but can become a, the field of service. C, whether their man can become an active cooperator with the hierarchy, able to create and to wield mental matter and so work out the purposes of the universal mind, which are prompted by boundless and infinite love and are the expression of the one life. That's pretty humbling and very deep, um, the requirement there, you know, the main requirement being that you, you, we've had some level of soul contact. Um, and then, you know, it, it, it alludes to a, a more difficult kind of uh, time initially as the waters ebb and flow. And that's where, you know, this is, this battle is, is fought out. And uh, who, you know, who's gonna win? Does does uh, does Arjuna, you know, turn his uh, his own will over to that of the soul? Right. And uh, I guess that's what really determines whether or not you know, we can we can proceed with it. So let's see what else. I'm sure he's going to get into all that. Oh, I just I, I just glanced down and I and I saw. Uh, oh, I sure, saw that, right. <laughs> uh, it's all good. Right. So this is the see. Yeah, this is great. So this is the crux of the entire situation. When the man has mastered the forces opposed to him, he is ready for the second initiation, which marks the release of the soul from the prison of the astral body. Henceforth, the soul will use the astral body and mold desire into line with divine purpose. It is of value for the student to know where he stands and what his particular problem is. The average man is learning to control the body, the learning the control of the physical body and the organizing of his physical plane life. The student on the probationary path is learning a similar lesson in relation to his astral body, its focus, its desires, and its work. The student on the path of accepted discipleship 
has to demonstrate this control and begin to discipline the mind nature and so function consciously in the mental body. The work of the initiate and the adept grows out of these achievements and they need not be dealt with here. The battle is spread over quite a series of lives, but in some one life, it becomes critical. The final stand is made and Arjuna triumphs in the fight, but only by letting Krishna assume the reins of control, by learning mind control, and by the revelation of the form of God. By distinguishing between the soul and the form, and by a vision of the perfection of the glory, which can radiate from the forms indwelt by God, he learns to choose the way of light and to see his form and all forms as custodians of the light. So he buckles down to the work of making the astral body simply a reflector of that light, and by the quelling of desire through the subjugation of the Agnesurians, who constitute his astral body and are the living substance of the astral plane, he learns to function as an adept on that plane to pierce through its illusion and see and to see life true. Speaking symbolically, the substance of the astral plane is animated by three types of divine force, which when brought together produced a great illusion. These are, one second. Sorry, man. No, there was a there was a spider. I must have let it in when I opened the window. Um, speaking symbolically, the substance of the astral plane is animated by three types of divine force, which, when brought together, produced a great illusion. These are: first, the force of selfish selfish desire. This involutionary energy plays a big part in bringing about evolution. For selfishness is the nursery of infant souls. Hence, the aspirant refuses to be held by it. Boy, isn't that awesome? Uh, Very much so. It, it adds such a great perspective to the, you know, the, the purpose of selfishness. Mm -hmm. And what, what we're looking at in, when we see it happening in ourselves and others. really brings about, you know, that, th that process brings about the evolution. It's unbelievable. Second, the force of fear. So we got selfishness first, and second, the force of fear. This is the product of ignorance, and in its initial stages, it is not the product of wrong thinking. It is basically instinctual and is found dominating in the non-mental animal kingdom, as well as in the human kingdom. But in the human kingdom, its power is increased potently through the powers of the mind and through memory of past pain and grievance and through anticipation of those we foresee. The power of fear is enormously aggravated by the thought form we ourselves have built of our own individual fears and phobias. This thought form grows in power as we pay attention to it for every ener for energy follows thought till we become dominated by it. Second-rate people are peculiarly a prey to this. For the majority of them, it constitutes the dweller on the threshold. Just as ambition and love of power backed by frantic desire and unscrupulousness form the dweller for the first-rate types, the crystallized thought form of an intellectual achievement for selfish ends and the use of knowledge for personality objectives stands before the portal of the path in the case of the third grade person and unless broken up and destroyed will dominate him and turn him into a black magician. So we're dealing with selfish desire so far and fear. You oft have been told that fear is an illusion, yet this statement does not help. It is a generalization that one can admit, yet which remains profoundly difficult to apply individually. 
The fear to which aspirants are subject, note the mode of wording this, are seldom of selfish nature, except insofar as suffering has caused them to recoil from a further continuation of untoward happenings. Their fears are wrapped in seeming love around their loved ones. Yet should each disciple ask himself a most practical question, how many of the torturing hours have been expended on realities and on tangible happenings and how many on illusory premonitions and on doubts and questionings based on that which has never happened. <clears throat> yeah, man, that is, uh, that's, that's the recognition of this whole thing that kind of can help us get past it, I believe. I would like to point out to my brothers that they need to do two things, to meditate on truth in daily life, using the concept of truth practiced and live, lived by as their seed thought and meditation. To this end, I would suggest that they memorize and use at all times when swept by illusory fears and needless foreboding the following formula of prayer. Let reality govern my every thought and truth be the master of my life. Let each say this to himself as constantly as need requires forcing his mind to focus attention upon the significance of these spoken words. So, you know, uh, early on in my uh, seeking and, and, and when, I, when I did the lower course study for the University of Metaphysics, one of the very first things they teach are positive affirmations. And I followed along with the program uh, really pretty, you know, I, I gave myself to the program and I said, I'm going to do this. And, you know, you create your own positive affirmations or you can use the ones that they have. Now, this is such a great uh, kind of, I don't want to say mantra, but but an affirmation to use for us. So DK is in fact, you know, kind of replacing some of those that are out there with um, probably I would say more powerful one, certainly because where it comes from, but let reality govern my every thought and truth be the master of my life. You can repeat these things Anytime you, you start to see your mind start wandering off and, you know, maybe, you know, a ner nervous reactions to, to things or something, you, you know what I mean? Like what, as soon as you're, you know, if you're following your emotions uh, and you start to see them wandering, you, know, you can, or, or your thoughts, you can use this and, and get, you know, get yourself back on track pretty quickly. I know that this is, it's true, and and it's it's particularly interesting in the beginning when there's a lot of negativity still dwelling around in the mind, and you can, re, you know, you can replace that negativity with positivity, and that's what this is in you know, it seems that this would be doing. I would also suggest I would suggest also sound common sense and the cultivation of an attitude of mind which refuses to permit time for illusory fears to grow. Fear is the main obstacle frequently to a very vital step forward which could be taken in this life, but may have to be delayed to another if due opportunity is not taken and the will nature powerfully excites. and the will nature powerfully excited. The first ray aspirant who fails to overcome his dweller may become a destroyer of souls, as it is called, and be condemned until he learns his lessons to work in the forces of matter and with the forms which hold all souls in prison. This is the occult significance of the misunderstood words, death and destruction. 
Of this type, the devil is the great prototype. The second ray aspirant who builds his dweller and permits its steady and increasing control becomes a deluder of souls. He is the true antichrist and through false teaching and the working of so-called miracles through hypnotism and mass suggestion, he draws a veil over the world and forces men to walk in the great illusion. It is interesting to note that the work of the devil, the imprisoner of souls, is beginning to lose its power. For the race is on the verge of understanding that true death is immersion in form and that matter is but a part of the divine whole. The thought form of this dweller on the threshold, which humanity has built for millions of years, is on the verge of destruction. But the work of the Antichrist is only rising now to its height. And the delusion of riches, of possession, of false teachings, will increasingly hold sway, but the term of delusion will be shorter than the term of destruction, for all these factors function under their own cycles and have their own ebb and flow. The third ray person, who also fails to shatter his dweller, becomes what is called a manipulator of souls and uses the mind to destroy the real and to put a veil between the man and reality. It must be remembered that none of these names and these activities refer to the soul on its own plane, but only to human souls incarnate and incarnation on the physical plane. This must be stressed, for on its own plane, the souls of all men stand free from illusion, and neither can be destroyed, diluted, nor manipulated. It is only the souls in prison who are subject to the activities of the forces of evil and only for a term. The first group works through governments, through politics, and the interplay between nations, and is relatively small in number. That's pretty key there, I would say, right? The first group works through governments, through politicians, and the interplay between nations, and is relatively small in number. The second ray group who delude and deceive work through religious agencies, through mass psychology, and the misuse and misapplication of devotion and of the arts. They are largest in number. And we can, you know, you can ponder on, you know, what those might be. You know, man, that's tough. That's stout. They work through religious agencies through mass psychology, misuse and misapplication of devotion and of the arts. Music, and you know, that would be a really good one, I, I think, right? Don't you think, Tom? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of messaging you can capture in music. So, or I mean, even All uh, film. Yeah. Yeah. Television. Any of the visual. The news. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, for sure. They are largest in number. The third group work primarily through commercial relations in the business world and through the use of money, the, con the concretization of prana or universal energy and the outer symbol of the universal flux and flow. These thoughts are suggestive but not vital, dealing as they do with the, with the cosmic tendencies. Right. Thirdly, the force of sex attraction. This is a pull from the physical plane and the swinging back of a type of involutionary energy onto the path of return. Cosmically speaking, it manifests as the attractive force between spirit and matter. Spiritually speaking, it is demonstrated as the activity of the soul as it seeks to draw the lower self into full realization. Physically speaking, it is the urge which tends to unite male and female for the purpose of procreation. When man was purely animal, no sin was involved. When to this urge was added emotional desire, then sin crept in, and the purpose for which the urge manifested was perverted into the satisfaction of desire. Now that the race is more mental and the force of mind is making itself felt in the human body, an even more serious situation is apparent 
which, in, which can only be safely worked out when the soul assumes control of its triple instrument. Humanity is now at the midway point as to this, as this rule shows. Certainly does, even still today, right? Um, man is swept by selfish desire and by ambition, for all of us have first-rate qualities. He is racked by fear, his own family fears, national fears, and racial, for all of us swing to the rhythm of the second ray. He is dominated by sex and by money, which is another manifestation of the energy of matter and hence has a triple problem with which he is well equipped to deal through the medium of his triple vehicle and the triple potencies of his divine soul. Let us close the instruction on that note, well equipped to deal. We can overcome mental inertia and begin to function as souls in command of our environment. The soul is omniscient and omnipotent. Um, omnipotent. So that's that was the first uh, section there. And that was in regard to the types of astral forces. Right. Yeah. It pretty much covers every, uh, pretty much everything that kind of buys for our attention these days, would you, would you not say? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean that, speak, I mean, it speaks the, to just about everything that most people seem to be drawn to. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because it's, you know, we got these different energies from the, uh, these different dweller aspects coming from the different rays, you know, one is the destroyer of souls. Uh, we got the, the second rays, you know, the first rays, the destroyer of souls when it's not, you know, when the dweller is not destroyed. Then we got the deluder of souls. And then we've got the uh, third rays, the manipulator of souls. So you have the destroyer, uh, the antichrist and the manipulator. If uh, you can't shatter the dweller. Mm. It's heavy. That is heavy. You know, the delusion of riches, of possession, of false teachings. The false teaching will increasingly hold sway. Um, you know, but there is right now, I would say, right. a, a, <clears throat> there, you know, there is a push or freedom happening. And, and you know, there is many people awakening to mm -hmm. at least some or other aspects of this. Right. right. So I think we are starting to see that um, the third ray and, and how we're, we're being deceived through um, Maybe it was maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's the first ray. Which one was the one of politics and? Uh, I think that was the third. The third ray. Uh, the first group works through governments, through politics, and the interplay between nations, and is relatively small in number. The second ray group, okay. Um, and I think it's important to note here too, before we get there. Um. It must be remembered that none of these names and these activities, so where we were talking about, you've got the destroyer, the deluder, aka the antichrist, um, or the manipulator, if you can't shatter that dweller. It says here um, that none of these names and these activities refer to the soul on its own plane, but only to the human souls and incarnation on the physical plane. And it must be stressed for on its own plane, the souls of all men stand free from illusion and neither can be destroyed, deluded, nor manipulated. Um, so it's only these souls in prison who are subject to these activities of the forces of evil and only for a term. So I think that the point there is, is that in these incarnations, we need to kind of shatter through these, work through these things to free ourselves. I think that's what it's saying. No, no, for to sure. Free, to free this ourselves, is, to free ourselves yeah. of these. I don't know. You know, and if you know it. your ray type, you know, you can see 
But now I'm not saying that I, I do. I've studied that. I, I have suspicions as to my own race. Um, but they're literally just suspicions. But if you well, did, well. you can see where your issues may lie, more mm -hmm. or less, in, inside of this too, right? Yeah, I think um, the important thing, the stress is to work it into your awareness um, and work through it so that you can dissolve that away and kind of move past these illusory desires, so to speak. Yeah, and, and, and this is the work of an, an aspirant to, to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Now, think about all those that don't even know that they are aspirants or right. any such. <clears throat> right. So they're, they're, they're potentially the ones out there doing this work because they were on, on, you know, off track a bit, right? Right. Or not off track. Or letting themselves maintain being off track because they're not aware that some of this stuff that they're engaged in or letting consume them is what's actually dragging them down and holding them down and kind of keeping them from progressing forward, which is the yeah, ultimate so, goal yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so understanding, you know, I, you know, most don't understand what the astral plane is. Right. And we don't, we don't really look at it. People don't, they hear that word, right? Because it's been around a long time and it's been used by disciples and initiates in the arts and uh, all in all sorts of places, you know, in music and such. Um, but you don't, we don't know what that means. Most people don't know. I don't think most people understand what, what the astral plane actually is and, and has and what, you know, it does for us. Um, and how it's to be used properly mm -hmm. certainly not if we don't, i mean we just don't even know right? <clears throat> and that the, the, so this is great information to, to to get out there this is a great gift yeah and it does open up in here to to it'd be good to have an understanding of what the astral plane is as you kind of read through this so I would imagine there's probably something pretty good that gets in a little bit more nitty gritty detail. Maybe that Michael Robbins, when you were looking through that. Oh yeah, he's yeah, yeah, he was um, incredibly deep. I certainly don't feel qualified to talk about it. I mean, I could easily look up a definition, but I don't think that's the point. Um, so it might be. Well, good it's just. For folks to, I mean, it's our desires. Yeah, you know, it's our. It's really. Our emotional you know, desire nature. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to overcome and, and see through it. And I think, you know, I think for some of, you know, for, for us who are studying, it's easy to see how these things come into play. Certainly, I can see all of these having come up in my life, you know, as being issues. Mm -hmm. I think there are issues common to all of us. Really. Right. And including sex. Right. So it may not be like, for instance, sex is, you know, there's, there's DK has written a lot about sex so much so that they they made a compilation. Uh, for it and of his um, work, you know, discussions. I don't, of it. I don't think it's a print anymore, though. Right. I got a copy of it. Yeah. Uh, and it it just really it just really covers down on every as all for all the books where he talked about sex, but it's you know, many, many pages. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't your particular problem in this life, right, it was probably somebody else's, the other person's problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, or, you know, we've all had faced and seen the issues of it, right? And we've kind of all, especially with the way, uh, you know, these video, you know, the internet and stuff. Well, I was going to say that it's, it's really put out there these days it's almost sold as like a um a status symbol in a way maybe and oh, yeah really, you got all really these yeah. it really shouldn't be i mean it's yeah it's i mean it says in here that you know it's from the physically speaking it's the years to which you unite male and female for the purpose of procreation so be fruitful and multiply right um, that's 
the, but that's the you know, that's that's the physical plane purpose of it. Um, it it mentions in here too that there's a spiritual purpose behind it as well. Um, or as cosmically speaking, it manifests the attractive force between spirit and matter. Spiritually speaking, it's demonstrated as the activity of the soul as it seeks to draw the lower self into full realization. So is that saying that guaranteed to come up? It guaranteed to come up, but it serves a purpose because it allows it's the lower you, it enables that. you to fully realize that lower self, um, which is very much probably a necessary step in the growth pattern because what you eventually want to do is move away from the lower self and into the higher self. Right. You can't, get, you, can't get, you can't get there if you skip over, so to speak. So it's not saying that sex is bad. No. Um, and actually in the physical, in the physical realm, it's absolutely necessary because that's where we are able to be fruitful and multiply so that we can continue on with the plan. Um, but I think it's more about moving past the purely animal state and into the higher being aspects of it. It's yeah, of and he mentions somewhere where you know it's supposed to become a uh, a regulated, uh, you know, uh, what, what is the words that he uses? Um, it should be like a natural occurrence, but mm -hmm. it's, it's cyclic, you know, um, and regulate, it should be kind of re regulated and um, an, a, a natural, a natural appetite, uh, you know, so not, not a perverted type of thing. And right. it's designed for creation, right? Like that's what we, like you said, right. we need that. But if you look, it's interesting because if you look at psychology, you know, or psychologists and therapists out there now, they're, you know, they're telling you, well, you, you, sh you know, these ma are magazines, which would be constitute the arts, I assume, or, or something to that effect, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're, they promote it like you should, you know, should be, you know, if you don't do it, and it's not healthy, you know, this and that, it's, uh, it's a, so there is a, a strange fight going on kind of there too. Yeah. It even Between touches here. Um, it's it's tying in that emotional desire aspect into it is where we need to turn away from. Um, in order to break our dweller, sure, yeah. Right, Just, right. Because it says right here, when, the, when to this urge, and we're talking a lot about sex, but I think it's important. When to this urge was added emotional desire, then the sin crept in and the purpose for which urge manifested was perverted into the satisfaction of desire so sex for the sole purpose of desire right. as opposed to its Creation. functional use in all three of the realms that, that it touches on but again um, totally natural totally natural totally acceptable but again, it's, it's one of those in things. All of our lives, right. You can't let it consume you. And it right. shouldn't be an act of desire. Well, the consume it says we're dom it says right there where you know he's dominated by sex and money at that point at this point. Right. So this is a that's a significant point of tension to to move past because you know men are, you know, we're we're there, you know, we think it's perfectly, you know okay to walk around you know thinking about it all day long and right it really does consume our you know it does consume the thoughts until you really have to grab a hold of that and and right. deal on it well yeah because it's purely physical animal man yeah we we looked at that as almost like a symbol of status um yeah it, and pleasure seeking you know exactly. and this is a, a, atlantean problems and that was you know they built the astral plane mm -hmm. and so, so yeah makes uh it's all makes perfect sense and i think it still reflects today even though i would say which i think is a good thing that some of this stuff is becoming much more apparent now 
-hmm. you know, the political issues, the issues with the arts, you know, um, the religious religion is, is in a struggle. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, you know, they want everybody there. And, and, and a lot of people have, you know, kind of moved past that to, to at least see that, you know, there's, there might be some validity, but they don't want to go. Not a lot of people are going to church, you know, so they're kind of like, oh, I don't need that. They recognize mm -hmm. that there's a direct connection and it doesn't have to be, it's not going to be found there necessarily, you know, but, and uh, I don't want to talk too much, but I know um, uh, Carla had given a good example one time and she said something like, you know, if you're in battle, you know, you, you know, you're in combat or something and you pray and you're, you're praying straight to God, right? You're, you're praying to God. And then, you know, inevitably you're here. You see, you know, you know, that, you know, you're watched over or however you want. Um, but you found out, you know, in those types of situations that you have a direct connection. You do not need to go through a third party on the lower plan, you know, physical plan in order to have a connection with God. And this is very important for kind of moving to the next that's important to move to the next level is to realize that we have that personal direct connection and right. that no other person needs to, you know, control that in anybody. That's a strange thing. And when you, you know, now as we look at it, right, it becomes kind of a strange thing. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is a pretty packed rule. Um, so we see we got through the first section and that might actually be a good natural place to break since this one is so important, especially for people going through the age of discipleship. But before we, I, this last paragraph, I think is worth another read again. Humanity is now at the midway point as this rule shows. Man is swept by selfish desire and by ambition for all of us have these first rate qualities. He is racked by fear, his own family fears, national fears and racial for all of us swing to the rhythm of the second ray. He is dominated by sex and by money, which is another manifestation of the energy of matter and hence has a triple problem with which he is well equipped to deal through the medium of his triple vehicle and the triple potencies of his divine soul. Let us close the instruction on that note, well equipped to deal. We can overcome mental inertia and begin to function as souls in command of our environment. The soul is omniscient and omnipotent. So again, it's it's getting into that. Um, to really get in touch with and know and understand our higher selves. We have to shed away all these selfish desires for these different manifestations, these, these modern day ma manifest your best life. And it's always, almost always through, you know, the, the money, the, the, the cars, the whatever, physical, material goods. Um, how many beautiful women are, or hot guys can I get with as a symbol of status? Um, and it's all very dangerous. It's, it kind of outlines that right here. Again, not to say that it's not going to be natural to kind of find yourself attaining some of this stuff. But I think the point is um, that we need to kind of shed it away in terms of it being something that consumes us and drags us down and the attainment of it through our own selfish desires, wants. I'm not even gonna label needs in there because everyone has to meet their basic needs, but it's saying that the stuff really isn't that which probably meets a basic need. It's thinking you have to attain something much more on the physical and astral realm, as opposed to moving up to that higher self um, and building out your mental capacity. If 
if, if I made any sense there, maybe you can help clarify. But no, I, no absolutely, man. It's uh, that's the you know he says he says everything. The astral plane is the battleground, and yeah. this is this is what we're you know this this midway point is what we're 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 dealing on right now. Right. And it's plainly obvious. And it, you know, but I do have that hope, you know, that that there's there are people that see it now mm -hmm. uh, because the disparage of one aspect or another of those is should be enough to wake us up. Like, you know, the fact that you can't turn on the news and listen and, and find anything that's likely to be right. actual at this point. It's all denial and deception of different sorts to manipulate us, right? right. So maybe it's you know, heavy third ray stuff coming there um, as the manipulator, you know, and then, you know, we're getting manipulated, diluted, and destroyed from really every angle at this point. So, yeah, this is a huge... You know, yeah. the waking up the, the waking up process happens here. Right. And That's I'm what glad we're you, looking at. Exactly. And I'm glad you pointed that out because I want to backtrack for a quick second because I said some stuff that could kind of come across as rough to some people out there who might be struggling with some of these physical desires, so to speak. Um wasn't intended to be kind of uh lecturing or anything like that. Um because everybody's going to work through this stuff and it's a part yeah. of the natural process to have these things arise and have to work through them on an individual basis so that you can overcome because really essentially what everybody is moving towards is that divine soul aspect for each person um and you can't really get there if you don't work through these things as they come up um going to make the mistakes um but what you need to come to the understanding is and ev eventually everybody will probably come to a realization at some point it might not happen in this lifetime it might take a few for some it might um i know it did for me that you know where you believe and you're working to attain all these different things and it never really gets you to the point of pure bliss and happiness, right? Um, you're just constantly trying to attain more and more and more. Um, but that's not the attainment we should be going. And at some point you come to a realization that the truth is that this isn't what I should be working to attain. It's actually something deeper within. And I think it's it points it out, it's that divine, getting in touch with your divine soul and uh growing from there you literally so. just explained the, the whole premise of the books of the book siddhartha oh did i and i never yeah. read them <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it is literally uh the whole that's the whole premise of the book because you, you can get everything that you want and it's not gonna make you happy or anything. exactly yeah it, it, it and there's just so many people out there that think that that's the path to happiness and they 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 will work through that themselves but at some point you hit you hit a brick wall and you're just like well damn i'm this really isn't making me happy okay i made a million bucks i'm still not happy um there might be something making you feel like you are in a way but it's not where your divine soul wants you to head so I thought that would be a good thing to throw and out. The third there. ray is, uh, yeah, the third ray on this is uh, is a pretty big deal too, mm -hmm. because that's what that's kind of what you're talking about. But but add uh, governments and politics and the interplay between nations, um, and he even says, you know, and is relatively small in number. So, you know, what does that mean? You know, are, are we asking ourselves these questions when we look at the state, you know, of the of the world and, the you know, the political world? I mean, you, they're, they're kind of doing us a favor right now because it, it, it's gone so far overboard and they're infringing on so many rights at this point that I think it's it's probably doing us 
a, a benefit. Yeah. I don't I, I think that's actually the first rate group, though, that works through the governments and politics. The first group works through governments and politics and interplay between nations in a relatively small in number. The second rate group who delude and deceive oh, okay. work through religious agencies, through mass okay. psychology and the misuse of misapplication of devotion of and of the arts and are largest in number. So the second rays delude, deceive through religion, psychology, misuse of devotion and the application of misapplication of the arts mm, and they're mm -hmm. the largest so the first is the smallest is that what it says so they're smaller yeah, it doesn't say they're the smallest yeah. but they're the ones that are working through the governments of politics interplay between nations is relatively small in number so the third group are the commercial relation work through the commercial relations in the business world through the use of money the the con Concretization, concretization. concretization of prana or universal energy and the outer symbol of the universal flux and flow these thoughts yeah, are suggestive so but not vital dealing as they do with the cosmic tendencies so um yeah they kind of jumbled it all in the same paragraph though so it can so kind of china an, an interesting note there is china is a is a, said to be a first ray country mm. well there you go yeah. Oh, there's and no manipulation. There's no manipulation going on. <laughs> there's <laughs> others too. I there there's there's others that are in that uh, major players that are involved in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know they want to rule the world first. For, you know, right? They have, they, they're demonstrating the will aspect, and they and want to be a destroyer of souls. As the first ray aspirant who fails to overcome his dweller may be a, become a destroyer of souls. They're and that's rule. associated. They want to rule. Yeah, and the prototype of the first ray is the devil. So how about that? <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot packed in here. Um, Give you what you want. You yeah. Know. Yeah. Very interesting. And that, you know, yeah, there's a lot packed in there. And the, I mean, you hit it right there at the end there with the first, second, and third groups. That's uh, it's just so interesting to to be able to see that so anybody who's reading this and this is great for like literally every human being should read this right you know and question what, you know whether you know how they feel about those things you know or how you know how they visual you know see this thing happening and whether these things are good so you have a lot of people out there that are just fully immersed in the you know accumulation of possessions and right. money um and you can kind of see personalities in there a little bit right too. oh absolutely absolutely yeah. and 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 like again not not here to judge anybody on that people are going to work through this in their way when they're ready to work through it um but you can absolutely see the different personalities they kind of associated with that because they'll almost try to sell it to a wider audience as in this is this is what you should be working to attain type of stuff yeah. it really isn't it really isn't well they have the power to, to right to get people to, and, and uh, the influence because people that right. want to that, that want to like hang back and be Oh man, you know, I just was pull, thinking keep them down of all of the, the physical world desires and wants. And they see yeah. these people successful with that and attaining a lot of it. And they're like, well, I want that too. So they have a lot of influence and power behind that. So, you know, yeah. people like us have have, have a, 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 a huge mission ahead of us to help yeah. shift the minds to, to get on the right track there. Well, we'll check this out though. Just like the, uh, you know, the the three planes, the three lower planes, you have the the higher reflection, which is the the first, second, and third ray, right? Or the the, the Father, Son, and you know the Holy Spirit, or however you want to look at those just things. They they work together to create the one, mm -hmm. right? So you can't have one aspect of this. Uh, without the other, the other, right. they're all working in conjunction with each other to to create this whole whole that that is humanity that we're 
that we're looking at. Because if politics were different, you wouldn't have the manipulation in the other places. And right. then back and back and forth, they're giving each other this power uh, and playing off of the, the that lower nature of mm-hmm. the whole thing in perfect accord, you know, chords too. Very wild. But that's how, you know, that's just a, a reflection of how, you know, it can also be good when they're all, imagine if they're all working um, and when they're working in conjunction together for, for the betterment. Right. How beautiful of a place this could potentially be. Right. Or, or you know, the kingdom of heaven would be. Anyway, yeah, that's deep. So what do you want to do now? I think this is a good place to break for the week. Okay. That was a lot to take in. We can pick up next week with the cyclic ebb and flow and close out rule eight. Uh, okay. But I think we had a lot of good discussion behind this because, yeah, as I indicated in the beginning of this rule, um, a lot in here. And let me just backtrack real quick. For the average student, this is the most important rule in the book from the standpoint of the average student, which well, and, that, us, and that makes perfect sense, sir. Yeah, yeah. So it's good that we spend a little bit more time here. I know I'm probably going to read over this again this week. I'll probably reference some of the uh, Michael Robbins material on the Memorial Web uh, Federation YouTube page that you, re- you mentioned to get a better clarity of it. But yeah, there's definitely a lot packed in here. You know, and and just real quick, as I'm I'm just looking over here. You know, this battle must be fought out here. And the ultimate uh, coming from that, well, it decides one of those three things that we discussed in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? Whether the soul will in any one life uh, be the dominant factor in the personality from henceforth be the servant of the soul. Whether the astral plane is no longer the plane of illusion, but can become a field of service, or whether the man can become an active cooperator with the hierarchy, able to create and wield mental matter and so on. Or, you know, um, you could, like he had said earlier, you know, not attain any more growth. Hmm. Right? He did say that earlier, right? Yeah. You know, that's, that's tough. So, you know, nobody likes those, those things, you know, so if you don't get it, if you don't get it under control and you lose, you know, it's a critical, it is a, this is, is a critical stage for all of us. Right. And I think it goes back a bit, just hearing you say that it kind of brings me back a little bit to rule seven where he was talking about um, treading the razor's edge, which is the middle path, the path that all of us are on. And you can go one way or the other, but if you don't, if you don't deal with this, you're not going to grow because eventually where you want to be heading is, well, hopefully I know what I'm trying to head is the path of right activity versus the left path. The path of white magic versus black magic. Um, The path of selflessness versus selfishness. So a lot in here, man. Yeah, Yeah. I wish, I wish, I wish more people. Well, I I shouldn't say that. Everyone eventually will open their eyes to this. Um, And like I said, it might not happen this lifetime. Some might need a few more. Um, But I know that I, Each day, as I grow, um, all of this becomes much more vivid for me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. More uh, synthesized and assimilated, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, buddy. So, all right. Until next week. Yeah, we'll pick up the rest of Rule 8 and have some more good discussion behind it. All right. That sounds good. See you next week. See ya.